If you've been on the internet, visit fandoms, seen that one Chobani yogurt commercial, Dear Alice, or any sort of climate change fiction writing center, you'll know of the existence of a certain genre called solar punk. The most prominent example I could show you of solar punk stories all come from Miyazaki. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure he created that genre in all but name. Though, of course, it's usually mixed in with diesel punk or steampunk, which seem kind of contradictory, but given that they're opposing civilizations, I suppose it fits in. Seems like a lovely genre, doesn't it? Rill, you're wrong! Solar punk doesn't exist, and this is not solar punk. Miyazaki is still the goat, though, don't get me wrong. This is a new genre. Firstly, we need to look into the etymology of the word solar punk. Solar means sun. I honestly don't think there's too much confusion there. But what does that mean? Well, in more modern solar punk works, this can mean solar energy, as evidenced by the abundant solar panels. But this doesn't really work in a Miyazaki film like Castle of the Sky, which is a famous solar punk work with more primitive technology. Solar, I think, can mean any form of sun power, not just artificial. And I think you're starting to understand where this is going. I assume everyone here is smart enough to understand the relation between plants and the sun. That's why it has the solar prefix as opposed to, say, a cyber prefix centering around computers. As evidenced by Miyazaki films, solar punk is also very versatile time-wise. While yes, technically computers existed as far back as ancient Greece apparently, cyberpunk usually extrapolates technology anywhere from the late 70s to technologies currently in development today, usually with an 80s aesthetic. And while nuclear energy is still a thing today, atom punk societies are primarily driven by atomic energy. And as you know, that basically means any writer will extrapolate technology anytime from the 60s all the way to the late 40s, and usually with a 50s aesthetic. Likewise, diesel things, again still a thing today, but those go from the early 30s to the late 20s, usually filling from the Great Depression to World War II era, while steampunk usually takes us from the Industrial Revolution to World War I. Lesser known genres include clock punk, which go either even further back by going to the 18th century and to almost like Baroque periods, but at this point, I think you get the idea. But all this is ignoring the elephant in the room. What the fuck is punk? Okay, I assume most of you know what a punk is. If you don't, I'm not going to explain. Just pause this video and Google it on your own. Okay, everyone knows what a punk is, right? I honestly don't feel like I even need to walk you through all this. Let's just let TV tropes do all the explaining on what the punk suffix means. Okay, so what do we have here? A world built around a particular technology that is pervasive and extrapolated to a highly sophisticated level. A gritty or transreal urban style. A cyberpunk-inspired approach to exploring social themes within a speculative fiction setting. Solarpunk does talk about social themes, yes, I won't deny that, but is this gritty or transreal? Does this look gritty to you? Okay, so you're probably asking me at this point, well, if this isn't punk, then what do we call it? Before I answer that, let me introduce you to a new concept. Enter cyberprep. Okay, so what is cyberprep? Cyberprep is what happens when people get sick of cyberpunk's constant doom-mongering. Enough telling us how bad it can get, tell us how good it can get if we just try. If that sounds familiar, that's just what solar punk is. Or should I say, solar prep, because let's be completely honest here, that's basically what it is. Alright, so I do have to address the elephant in the room. That is, some of you are pointing out that genres like steampunk can be a more optimistic take on things. Now, I'd like to say that there has been a certain degree of punkflation, when pretty much everything has a punk suffix to it nowadays, but that would be me being disingenuous. Truth is, steampunk, the original punk genre after cyberpunk, aka the one that kicked off the trend of the su punk suffix, was always established as an optimistic vision of the Victorian era. Yes, you can have a steampunk story that is pretty gritty. A lot of steampunk stories are very gritty, but that doesn't change the fact that yes, steampunk was established as a slightly more optimistic tone. I do admit that my argument is a bit shaky here, and I don't know if I want to expand this video into how we should call optimistic steampunk stories steam prep instead. So I won't. 
And before anyone here starts saying, yeah, well, solar punk is punk because it rebels against the status quo by showing us what it could be. No. Again, cyberpunk does the exact same thing. Cyberprep also criticizes the world by showing us a popular future of what we could become instead. A major issue here is that solar punk is inherently utopian. That's why you don't see a lot of pure solar punk stories. Again, if you look at Miyazaki films, a lot of them involve a utopian solar punk society being attacked by a society with a different aesthetic. As a matter of fact, I don't think Miyazaki has made a single pure solar punk setting. Yes, you could completely ignore solar punk's utopian ideals and reveal that actually this solar punk society is not as good and is actually a dystopia, but that would really go against the founding idea that this is good. It's like those stories that really love the cyberpunk aesthetic but fail to have any meaningful criticism of society. Again, checking TV tropes, there's this page called Cyberpunk for Flavor, in which a cyberpunk aesthetic is used, but there's no actual meaningful criticism of society in a cyberpunk lens. Solarpunk's utopian premise holds it back from being a viable pure setting outside of a slice of life story, and the only way to have a pure solar punk aesthetic to a setting is to either go against the spirit of the genre, or to only write slice of life stories. Contrast, say, the steampunk setting, which can be dystopian, or you can have a more hopeful aura. That's why the name solar punk fails to fit, because unlike cyberpunk, which is dystopian when written right, or steampunk, which can go either way, solar punk's name directly conflicts with what it's trying to do. Only when you pit a society with a solar punk aesthetic against a society with a different one can you have a solar punk story, which simply isn't the way it should work. Honestly, I do admit that even beyond solar punk, yes, there is a degree of punkflation in which everything and anything gets labeled punk. Dungeon punk I can sort of understand since it's basically a grungy sci-fi setting with a medieval coat of paint, but there's no way desert punk or ocean punk is an actual thing. And cattle punk is just steampunk set in America, let's be honest here. But ultimately, that's the problem. When words cease to have meaning, why even have those words? What does solar punk want to be as a standalone aesthetic? And what exactly does it mean? Names matter a lot, and I, get, I think getting this initial part nailed down firsthand is critical to the question I want to ask the genre. What exactly do you want to be?